Greetings. Yesterday, I introduced you to the first of four parts of the storytelling model of one of my mentors and friends, Michael Haig. His first step is to follow the pain. If you didn't get to see that yesterday, go back to that video. It just gives you insight on why we need to create some pain in our stories to connect this to our audience. The second part of this model is to transport the audience. What does that mean? It means transport them into your world. And the way we do this is to give details about the character and the setting. This can be a danger point for some storytellers because they often go too far into the details. And it starts to sound like one of those Shakespearean or those old romance novels. The kind that says, when I awoke that morning and I traversed across the dew-covered grass and I felt the, the, the moisture between my toes and the wind blew off the Atlantic and touched my face. No, 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 no. We don't want that. We do not want to write a novel, but we do need to give enough details and let the audience fill in the rest. So here, here's an example. I'm in the midst of, of recreating a story about the time I get to drive a real race car at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. And to take you into that scene, the way I start the story is this. It's a cloudy, overcast day at the Brickyard, otherwise known as the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. I'm tightly strapped into the cramped cockpit of an Indianapolis style race car. The reason I'm there is because for my birthday, my sweetheart had given me a letter that said, happy birthday, honey. Your gift is a five lap drive by yourself in a real race car at the Indianapolis Motor Speedway. This is a dream come true. Sitting in that car, I remember how when I was 10 years old, I had always dreamed about why, when I attended my first Indianapolis 500, I'd had this dream. What would it be like to drive in one of those cars on that track and, and drive fast? And now I was about to find out. Sitting in that car, tightly strapped in, I could feel the sweat pouring down my face, my neck, and my back. I could smell the exhaust fumes from the car in front of me. And I was feeling this weird mixture of emotions. I was euphoric because I finally got to drive at Indy. I'm going to drive fast, pass cars, and feel all that power. And I was feeling terror because of the orientation I had just sat through. I thought, oh, my God, am I going to survive this? No, I'll stop there. What did I do with those details? Number one, I, I painted the a picture of the weather so you could get a feeling. It's an overcast day. What did you see in your mind? Now, if you're familiar with the Indianapolis Motor Speedway, you probably got a picture of that. If not, you've at least got a picture in your mind of a racetrack. I talked about being in a cramped car, tightly strapped in, sweat rolling down my body. Could you feel that? What did you smell? When I tell this, people say, oh, I remember the exhaust of the car ahead of you. Yes, it's been said and research has shown that the strongest sense we have is smell. So when you can add a sensory smell, uh, when, when you can add smell, increase the senses like the sweat rolling down my body. Your audience is transported into that race car. Or my audience is transported into that race car with me. Even though they may never want to, they're there. What did I do from a character standpoint? I took you into my head. I'm feeling euphoric because this is a dream I've had since I was 10. And I'm terrified because of this orientation that I just went through. You didn't hear that part of the story. I might share it in a, on another video. But that's what we mean by transporting your audience. Give enough details about the setting and the character so that we know what that person is feeling and thinking. And by the way, we do that through dialogue. Don't describe it as much as just take us into the person's head as much as you can, so we know exactly what's going on inside them. You may never drive a race car, you may never want to, but I'm sure at some point in your life, you've been in an experience where you felt euphoric and terror at the same time, maybe an amusement park ride, your first time driving a car, not at a racetrack, but on real streets. That's where the relatability comes in.
So your, your idea today, your lesson is to transport your audience into your world so you can tap back into their, theirs. You do that through emotions and details about the scenario or the scene and the characters involved. We'll talk to you tomorrow about our third part of the storytelling format. Talk to you then.